Aaron Tuttle here for Ferguson Roof Systems. For 43 years, Ferguson Roof Systems has been protecting Oklahoma's homes and businesses with quality roofing services. Their goal was to be the most honest and dependable roofing company in the state, all while providing free services such as lifetime labor warranty and annual inspections. Well, mission accomplished with thousands of client testimonials, an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating, and a five-star rating on Google. Look, the weather gives you enough to worry about, so why worry about who to trust with your roof? Call Ferguson Roof Systems today or find out more at fergusonroofsystems.com. Hey everyone, meteorologist Aaron Tuttle with you. It is Friday. It's time for your weekend forecast. Some of you may be taking off for a long extended holiday week. So if that's you, congratulations. So we're going to talk about the weather as we head on into the rest of our Friday and also our Saturday and Sunday and get you a sneak peek at what you can expect for the 4th of July. So thanks for joining me out there. Uh, let's see, things have been fairly quiet um, for most of the state. There's been a couple storms here and there, and we had some uh, panhandle action uh, yesterday in the Texas and Oklahoma panhandle. And today should be mostly quiet, and tomorrow we're going to have probably a better opportunity for some thunderstorms and maybe even into Sunday as well. So that may mess up some of your plans. We'll take a look at where that's going to be and the timing. So thanks for joining me. Make sure you like and share the video on your subscribing feed, wherever you're at. If it's Rumble, YouTube, Facebook, uh, whatever it may be. Matter of fact, I'm going to put some uh, links in here in the comments section on Rumble and also on Facebook as usual and also on Twitter X. Uh, that way you can get some additional information that way. So let's get that done. All right. So I think all my business is done for. All right. Let's take a look now. What's going on on the weather? Let's take a look outside first. So a few clouds. Not bad. Rain-free clouds. And <laughs> it's unfortunately not thick enough to, to keep those temperatures from climbing. If you look here at my Tempest weather station, I've got 91.8 degrees. So it's starting to warm up a little bit. And usually, as a rule of thumb, uh, you can about add around 10 degrees to your 11 o'clock temperature to get your high for the day. And that's, that's a general rule of thumb. It's, it does pretty decent in most cases. Uh, it can be swayed a little bit depending on some other things that may happen during the day. But for us, that means it's probably going to put us pretty close to 100 degrees today. may not quite make it, but it's going to be pretty close here in Oklahoma City Metro. And the reason why I bring that up is because we have not hit 100 degrees yet. So if you look at the uh, June temperatures, our maximum temperature is this little column right here on the left. If you look all the way down on the 23rd, we did hit 99. So that was the closest that we saw. And we hit 98 on the 25th. Um, otherwise, it's been mostly mid-90s. Now, I will tell you just, uh, I did. I mentioned this in my blog, if you read it on Sunday, I put my blog out every Sunday, and uh, usually the models will overestimate when we see 100 degrees here in Oklahoma City, and it's because of the moisture, in other words, in the, uh, in the ground. So all the vegetation, the ground has to dry up, the vegetation has to start to dry up, and when that happens, then we start to hit those triple digit numbers, and once that happens, they typically don't go away, uh, and we flirt with those for the rest of the summer. So there's usually a little bit of a lag um, with that and so so far this week has proven true will we end the week that way well we'll find out <laughs> here in just a second uh, as far as uh, temperatures out there currently like we mentioned a little on the steamy side so we've got about nine degrees here across the metro looks like 94 in Yukon El Reno about 92 but it's already at 100 in here in Weatherford my goodness now it always gets hot out in weather in western Oklahoma first uh, out in southwest and western Oklahoma, you can get those century marks coming in really easy very early in the year. Whereas in eastern Oklahoma, why? Because again, all the evapotranspiration from all the additional vegetation, even though temperatures aren't as hot, it gets just as nasty because of the increase in humidity. Therefore, the heat index goes up. So right now it's 88 degrees in Bixby, for example. But let me see, did I have this thing loaded? I did not. But you know what? We could do that. Let me... Um, let me do this. Let's go find out what the heat index is. In other words, we factor in the humidity and we'll see what that 88 actually feels like. Now this is just to the human uh, skin, right? So it feels more like 96. And if you look here in central, north central Oklahoma, it already feels like 108 in Kingfisher. So 
these are some pretty steamy values and that is why you get your heat index uh, uh, advisors that are issued or your excessive heat warning same kind of uh, principle now if you look at the surface map we do have a southwest wind which brings in that drier air in this area and you have kind of a southeast to south wind in this region so that brings in the moist air so there's your dividing line here across the state and so the good news is eventually you do start to lower dew point values out here so it doesn't um, be as oppressive as it is out here where you have dew point values say in the mid 70s um, so that that's a big difference believe it or not between 56 degree dew point and a 75 degree dew point this time of the year trust me you want the 56. if you look at the satellite viewpoint like we talked about there's some uh, high level clouds out here across northern and western oklahoma no big deal there you're still going to have to use plenty of sunscreen to be hitting out the pools later today or out in the lakes, etc. So here's your severe weather outlook for tomorrow. And there is a slight uh, marginal risk, I should say, in green across southern Kansas and the northern half of Oklahoma. So that does mean we're going to experience at least a few thunderstorms out there. Like I mentioned for today, hot heat index values this afternoon will be up into the uh, above 110 category. So in other words, it's going to feel more like 112, 114 uh, around uh, central Oklahoma in the heat index um, in the heat impacts for your vulnerable populations of course uh, if you're pregnant if you have newborns children elderly uh, chronic illness never leave anyone alone in the car even if it's only you know for 10 minutes or so it heats up really fast that includes your pets drink plenty of water even if you're not thirsty wear loose fitting light colored clothes of course air conditioning so uh, this time around, I mean, we're used to it. We moderate pretty quick. Other parts of the country, not so much. But there's still, you know, you still got to be smart about it as to, um, you know, how you want to protect yourself. So uh, this is some importance for there. Also, oh, the uh, severe weather outlook. Let's see, where are we? Saturday. So there's a little close-up view of that. Uh, not expecting any tornadic activity, really. Uh, very small hail. And the wind will be the biggest deal, 60 to 80 miles per hour. Tulsa, same kind of idea. Uh, Small hail, otherwise 60, 70 mile per hour winds. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, jet stream pattern. So if we focus, uh, again, the, the brighter the colors, the stronger the lift in the atmosphere with these little disturbances. But we're going to focus this to Saturday. Let's go right here. You see across the Panhandle region in Colorado, you start to see just a little bit of color there on the map. So that kind of sneaks southward here in Oklahoma. And that is for Saturday evening, Saturday night. And there's that little secondary wave that's trying to come in right there across uh, Sunday over the top. Uh, now, over the top means over the top of this upper level ridge that has developed. And so that's kind of hard. You have a, a two-fold system. You have a airflow is clockwise around a high. And it can sometimes bring in these little disturbances over the top of it that sneak in. But at the same time, you have actually sinking air that happens underneath the high. So the atmosphere is battling itself has little disturbance, it wants to lift the air, and it has the overall pattern, which wants to sink the air. And you still sometimes are able to squeeze out even a few showers or thunderstorms because of the heat and humidity. There's an offset to that. But regardless, as far as the big action goes, that would be up in this part of the country and up in this part of the country where you have all the extra lift uh, to speak of. All right, so anyway, that'll that'll die out uh, for Sunday and Monday. We still have the high basically centered across our region, which means the heat kind of continues. It will shift to the east a little bit. Anytime you can have a high that goes uh, in this fashion here, it does allow some tropical moisture rotating around it, and that typically cools us down by a couple of degrees. So that's a little bit of a, a, a benefit to that pattern change. Now, we are going to have a weak front uh, associated with that little disturbance that we talked about. So let's find out where that's going to be. So let's zip this through time. So this is a 6 o'clock Saturday morning. Here we go for Saturday, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Uh, so let's stop it right about 5. So at 5 o'clock, it kind of snakes on through. So this is our weak little summer front. Um, sometimes people call it the not so hot front because it's still hot. It's just a little tiny bit of a break. Like you barely notice kind of a break, but there's your uh, northwest winds behind it and your southeast winds. So this will be our focusing mechanism for some thunderstorm activity for Saturday afternoon and evening. And then it sticks around, looks like, for Sunday. So let's go to Sunday, 4 o'clock. Same idea. It's a little, kind of basically in the same region. Maybe it's a little slightly different configuration, but kind of right along the I-40 corridor. So there you go. So you're going to have a little um, focusing mechanism for some showers and thunderstorms here this weekend. So for today, again, not expecting much out there. Uh, for uh, There's a little hint of an isolated shower, a thunderstorm way up here in northwest Oklahoma during the late evening. But by tomorrow morning with some moisture working in, you might have some upper level, um, excuse me, some uh, elevated, weaker showers that may pop up here 
during the seven, eight o'clock hour across northern Oklahoma. No big deal, those things will move out. And then by five o'clock and six o'clock for tomorrow afternoon on Saturday, that is where you have your line of showers and thunderstorms that will try to get building along that cold front here in uh, central Oklahoma along the uh, turnpike. Uh, wind shear is very, very weak. Um, directional shear is okay, but we're talking five knots. Uh, Cape value is up around three to 4,000. Um, actually, a pretty decent cap there at that point, this, this picture. But the front will help to override that, I believe. Okay, so anyway, so there's our storms there. All right, so you can see how they even developed across northern Oklahoma during uh, Friday evening, or excuse me, Saturday evening. So if you do have any plans, again, it starts around 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can see how they all continue across the area. So just know you might have to cancel them and move them indoors. That's midnight hours. Then things start to kind of wind down. Uh, usually a bit of a lag, so some leftover stuff during the early night, early morning hours for uh, Sunday morning, uh, and then a resurgence along that front of some new additional activity. Doesn't seem to be as nearly as robust, but by four, three, four o'clock, maybe even as early as two on Sunday afternoon, that little boundary here lighting up along that cold front. So these will be mo these will be kind of like marginally severe storms, uh, most of them weak, but you might have one or two that get kind of carried away with some damaging wind on uh, Sunday. Probably a little bit better opportunity for that on Saturday as the uh, data here a little bit more intense with that uh, signal. And I didn't look, but I can do that real quick. Let's just see if there's any um, signals in the data for some decent wind with those. Mm, let's see. Mm. It doesn't do it. I'm surprised. It should have. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see. There's well. There's nine o'clock. There's a little signal there for that one. Uh, it wasn't much. Uh, the signal there of sixty. Uh, but I would expect a, more of a signal from that. But regardless, uh, here's a look at your rainfall amounts. And of course, it'll be feast or famine. So if you don't get these thunderstorms in that little area we're talking about, you won't get it. So basically, the southern area of, of Oklahoma is not expecting anything, and the far northern areas. Everything else will be in between. So two areas focused, I-40 corridor on Sunday, and that same region, but also across northern Oklahoma on Saturday. So there's your area of rainfall. Oh, and by the way, some of those, I mean, look at the mounts here. That's four inches of rain. So you could get, oh my goodness, that's six inches of rain. You can get some flash flooding in those cases. If you get these summertime storms that just sit there and they don't move because the wind shear is very weak, so they don't really drift them anywhere, and they sit there and rain and rain and rain on top of you. So you're going to have to get some flash flooding, so be advised that that can really sour your barbecue. All right, so temperatures, let's get to that, and I'm going to wrap this thing up. So for today, uh, things are obviously pretty toasty. Uh, these are actual surface temperatures out west. The models are going into the 105, 106, maybe even 109 range. That is hot stuff. Now, I will say that the NAM typically gets just a tiny bit too warm too early. Uh, so it's got 102 in Oklahoma City. Again, I think we'll probably top off about 99. So you can shave probably about three degrees off these temperatures out here in the west uh, for today. But regardless, it's still pretty toasty. Uh, now, overnight, we don't get to cool down that much. If you notice, here is the 7 o'clock temperatures in the morning. And we're in the upper 70s near 80. So if you don't have air conditioning, that gets, that gets pretty. Uh, uncomfortable. All right, and then on Saturday, same kind of thing. We're going to have some 90s out there, uh, some 100s. Now, we could have some compressional warming, which is a little process you can get ahead of a cold front boundary on the southern end of it, which may end up bumping us above uh, 100 degrees here in Oklahoma City Metro. So that would be, my guess, the best chance opportunity that we would have to do so uh, for Saturday. All right, and then as we go on into Sunday, a little bit cooler because we've had that front now around us for a couple of days and we've had some rainfall around. So Sunday afternoon, a big difference in temperatures than it was over the weekend. Lots of 80s and some low 90s north of that boundary, whereas your hot stuff, upper 90s to near 100, is across southern Oklahoma. So a state divided on Sunday. So temperatures will feel a lot better. It'll still feel muggy to you though. I mean, it's still gonna be pretty humid. Uh, like we mentioned, uh, heat index values today, <clears throat> we factor those in. It's going to feel more like 112, 113, 114 degrees, especially across the eastern half of the state. As far as our Saturday goes, same thing here. <clears throat> it's going to feel like 110, 114. What about Sunday? Sunday, even though those temperatures are cooler, <laughs> look at these heat index values. If your actual air temperature is 92, but it still feels like 105, <laughs> that's not doing you any favors. That's gross. That, that's some that's some grossness. So. 
Ugh, even though that's so, so misleading. Oh my goodness, because yeah, the models had us what? Uh, like into the 80s, uh, lower 80s up here with a heat index value to the 100s. Oh my goodness gracious. What are the dew points up there to make that happen? Let me go find out because I'm disgusted by that action. Oh, that's why. Oof. Yeah, I didn't, didn't look at that earlier. Dew point value of 78. You get, a, you get dew point values in the upper 70s near 80. I get an 80 dew point. You're begging for mercy. All right, so for today, like I said, I'll probably top out about 98 uh, degrees, I think, here in Oklahoma City. Uh, let's see, but tomorrow with compressional warming, I think we might just hit the century mark. Uh, Sunday cooler because of the rainfall on the front, depending on which side of the front you're on. Uh, although heat index value is still pretty high, and then we're kind of back to where we would normally be uh, into the uh, upper 90s to around 100 degrees for a while. It looks like a nice little dip in the cool temperatures here as we head into past our July, so it's for Friday and Saturday of next week. Um, but otherwise, temperatures, you know, not too unexpected uh, for that purpose. And also, real quick, I'll just show you what the potential rainfall looks like as we head into next week, just based off the European data for our 4th of July, just to see if there's anything that we should be concerned with. And for your planning purposes, let's get past this weekend into next week. Uh, looks like uh, mostly dry, mostly dry, mostly dry. There's a very few, let's see, there's Wednesday. So here we go. So here's uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So it looks like probably a weak front up there in Northwest Oklahoma. All right. And then as we head into uh, Thursday itself, so July 4th, Signal for uh, some isolated maybe storm activity up here in northeast Oklahoma and across parts of the Panhandle, maybe parts of uh, Kansas, but most of the state dry. And then there's see there's Thursday night along the border, and by Friday uh, looks like a weak front, so or a back end system from an MCS. You might have some action late Thursday night into Friday morning there across the eastern half of the state. So it looks like there may be some thunderstorms around for the nighttime hours after July 4th uh, festivities. And let's see, there's some additional activity there for, uh, let's see, that's on uh, Saturday morning and on Saturday itself. So there will be like at least a few storms around the area uh, for next week, but not that many. And it looks like right now things are dry for your fourth. So knock on wood, let's hope that's the way it holds. So, um, so that's pretty much it for me uh, as far as the uh, tropics go, Chris. So. Uh, they're starting to get active, starting to heat up a little bit. Uh, temperatures out there across the uh, ocean are quite warm, which is where they should be. And uh, disturbances will start to rock on off of uh, Africa. There's a couple right now in the forecast models going west toward the Caribbean that may develop into a tropical storm or a or weak hurricane. Uh, but those right now are forecasted to go due west into uh, Mexico and not affect the United States at this point in time. But starting to look at that data now to see if there's any change in that. And I'll start including tropical forecasts as it looks like things may start to affect the United States coastline as we go through our upcoming uh, weeks and months for the rest of our hurricane season. Well, that's it for me. I want to thank you guys for uh, tuning in and joining. And uh, we'll see you on the next broadcast. Hope you have a great holiday weekend. Uh, on into next week and everybody be safe make sure you stay uh, uh, you know safe from the heat and also the fireworks <laughs> anything else you might be doing all right you guys have a great friday enjoy